Just bounce to this. Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name is Brandon Clements, and welcome back to part three. What we're going to do today is jump in, do some more hologram stuff, and maybe set it up so that we can do some shading. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, what we have right here is um, some of our pieces, and um, I think we have everything that we need. Let's jump back over to the example file, and let's kind of look at that. So we're getting pretty similar to this. Uh, we'll add a few more lines into our project so that uh, some of this looks a little more design. Um, and, and then I also have like a dotted line um, coming across here. So this is uh, on a cloner. Let's go ahead and jump into our scene. And what we need to do is um, let's go and grab some of these lines. What I'm going to do is um, kind of scale them out a little bit more like this. We can change uh, the focal length of our camera. So let's change it from 36 to something that's a little more flat, like 50. And then we'll take our um, protection tag off so that we can move our camera back a little bit more. Um, so maybe something along the lines of that. And let's go ahead and add our protection tag back. Um, I want to grab the two splines here, go into point mode, select both of these endpoints, and let's kind of scale those down till maybe around right here. And also take the rectangle, and we need to make these uh, maybe a little bit thinner. So let's zoom in. Uh, it looks like we were in point mode when we did that. So let's be in object mode. Um, and scale that down. Okay, let's see what that looks like in our camera. Looks pretty good. And we can grab these splines and let's go ahead and copy both of them out. And we'll kind of move this up. Hold control and click and drag and move it over. Um, this may not be perfect, but we can look at it in the front view and try to get it a little bit better. Maybe something along the lines of that. Let's grab our other two splines and let's just kind of get them a little closer, maybe something like that. That's okay. We probably won't be able to notice it from the camera. Uh, let's go into point mode and grab all of these guys. And we have the outside points and let's just kind of scale them in. Let's do this um, one at a time, one side at a time. Scale this in to around, let's say 70%. And then we can grab the other two and scale that into 70%. This way we're not distorting um, how straight they are. We're just pulling them closer together. Okay, that will do. It doesn't have to be super perfect, but we do need to make more sweep objects for these. So let's do that by holding Alt and letting them fall underneath. Okay, so we have these. Let's put them back into our, oh, we don't have a group for these, but that's okay. Um, let's copy the rectangle into each. Just by holding control, clicking and dragging, I can put them into their respected groups. And uh, let's take the name. Uh, we'll just control C, just copy pasta, all those into here. And then uh, let's change the name. So this one will be three, four. We don't leave anything out here on our channel. <laughs> we'll show you everything, uh, even renaming, which is kind of boring. Let's go ahead and take those and put them into their own null by hitting Alt G and call this line GRP. Okay, cool. So those that's the group there. Um, let's make some more arcs real quick. Let's just copy the group kind of scale that up. We can actually rotate a little bit more. I just want to try to make this look as cool as possible in the short, shortest amount of, t of time as possible here on our channel. So let's just kind of scoot this. Sorry, I just need to grab this. There we go, the Z. And maybe put that a little bit closer. Okay, that looks pretty good. Not bad. Um, I think what we'll do now is start creating the uh, hologram uh, shader. So we'll just go into create shader octane octane material and we need to make this a diffuse and let's change it to black. We don't need any actual color in the diffuse. 
we'll go down to the emission and we will select a texture emission come into the texture and we need to get an RGB spectrum and change this kind of more blue so let's go full blue and maybe kind of rope this back into that kind of teal color okay maybe 90 percent uh, saturation let's go back in here and change the power down kind of low um, it's your choice whether you want to cast illumination or not I think it'll be okay uh, we'll begin testing this here in a little bit and then what I'd also like to do is come into the opacity and we're gonna add a falloff map sorry not a float texture a falloff map and what that will do is when you're looking at it from the front camera angle uh, you know from the zero point of reflection it's gonna be uh, completely transparent and at the glancing angle it will be a hundred percent there it will be 100 percent opaque and like I said the facing angle will be completely see-through and we can change that of course um, the grazing will actually kind of rope that out to the outside so it's all about how you want this to look um, I'm gonna leave this maybe around 0.5 it may give it some interest again we'll just keep tweaking this until it looks um, like we want it to okay so uh, what else can we do we can add one more arc and kind of make a dotted line look to it so we're just going to clone some uh, shapes onto this so let's just grab a cube and we'll kind of scale this out kind of down to a dotted line jump out of our camera and make sure that this is nice and small like that okay just kind of eyeballing it and we can go into our cloner we want to be cloning the cubes and we want to make it a render instance and we want to clone this onto an object. Our object is going to be the arc. Uh, what we need to do now is just change the, let's see, the object. We need to be changing the way that it's facing. So let's go ahead and collapse, grab our axis tool, and we just need to spin it around. It looks like on the X to it's completely 90. And um, of course we can Un untick the uh, axis tool and scale it down so that now it looks like it's kind of a dotted line and then we'll say that the distri distribution should be in a step fashion and let's just bump up the um, sorry take down how many it's stepping the distance between the two all right I think that will do uh, we could even animate like the, uh, let's see, animate the offset so that it looks like it's moving around. So cool stuff. Let's go ahead now um, and throw our shader onto onto some of these objects and take a look at how, what it looks like and uh, see if we want to change anything. So let's just change the name to... Let's just go down here and change it to dotted line. And let's call this one dotted line arc. I'm kind of just reorganizing this so that it makes sense to me where everything's at. And this is going to be our ran this is our random scale of rotation. Let's change this so that we know that it is uh the poly these these shapes here in the middle poly random so that's what that's affecting um, okay shader let's put that on everything let's put it on the actually I don't think I want to put this on the tendril I think I'm just gonna put this onto the lines in the arcs and the dotted line and I think that would be good what I'd like to do for these different shapes like the tendril um, we can do something unique and grab all the edges and we can go up to tools and let's see where this is located uh, sorry mesh commands 
and we're gonna do uh, edge edge to spline sorry I am not I am in polygon mode I need to be in edge mode and select all the edges and go back to mesh commands and then edge to spline what that will do is make a child and if we hide this and show that's what the green light will will do it will always show no matter what even if the parent is turned off um, we need to show this guy here the spline um, what we can do with the spline now is put a octane object tag and we can begin to render this as hair and change the thickness around so let's say 0 0.1 0 0.1 and let's go ahead and throw our texture onto the spline so let's see now let's turn off the scatter and let's just go ahead and send that to Octane and see what it looks like. And let's make sure that this is rendering. So we need to put the stoplight on for it to render. Okay, cool. So you can see that it's uh, rendering it as hair. Uh, and it looks like we need to change our shader a little bit. So let's go into the opacity and bring that up and then change our emission, the emission power. Let's say 100 to where it was. And it looks like we need to turn on the surface brightness. Okay. So now we can start to illustrate how this looks a little bit better. And of course, let's go into our settings or actually I think yeah we have an octane sky here let's change the RGB down to kind of dark like black okay so th this is gonna render pretty fast for us um, you know you could do this with polygons but you know if you wanna be able to uh, get some different interesting looks using the hair it's gonna help a lot and you know you can have your root and your tips be different sizes and this is independent of each object. So as long as you have the object tag here and you're telling it to render his hair, um, you can change the root thickness. You know, you can really get some cool um, looks to it. And the reason why it's not showing up as actual lines is because of the shader. You can see how it falls off when you're looking at it from the, from the facing angle. And the glancing angle is still visible. So let's just change this around. Maybe not. Maybe not point oh. Yeah, maybe on this object we'll make it kind of small. Um, the cool thing about this is that you guys get to see all my decisions and see how I'm doing every single thing in this project. So let's try and make this look like it is cloning. Uh, let's go ahead. There we go. And turn on the scatter. And you can see that they're hanging out. So if we zoom in to one of these guys... So that's one option that we have. We can actually scatter these polygons, but if we want to just have this in the same place, what we need to do is create a cloner uh, because the um, the spline is not being scattered in the octane scatter. So we need to uh, do that here real quick. We can change this back to object and take the tendril shape and then make sure that these clone. Okay. So... <laughs> You can see that we got something that looks kind of cool. Okay, so we need to change this to, we need to go to the transform and rotate these uh, negative 90 degrees. Negative 90, if I can type it. Okay, cool. So you could, you could render both of these on top of each other. You could have uh, the tendrils being um, the actual polygons, and then you could have the lines being right underneath of it like the wireframe so if we rename this this would be like wireframe tendril and it you know it's a cloner so let me just separate that with an underscore so if we actually come down here and look at render instances and turn this on uh, you can see that we can't in instance a spline that we can only instance um, meshes so that's how uh, the uh, tendril scatter wasn't able to replicate the uh, the actual line in the hair that's being rendered here in Octane. So uh, it looks really cool to have both of them like that. Uh, we need to make sure if we're animating these with an effector that we have it in the cloner and we also have it the same effector in the 
uh, scatter node, and these should move as one. So we get the best of both worlds. We get the fall off, and we get the actual um, hair showing up. Uh, some of these other lines I think would look really cool uh, if they were rendered like hair. So if we came over to the dotted line and we went ahead and selected um, every edge, you can see that I've done that on my shortcuts. I have everything selected and then let's just pause this real quick. Come up to the mesh commands and then we can do uh, edge displine. We can get that out of here and bring it up. And I'm just going to copy over both of these tags onto the cube spline. And then let's go ahead and send this back to Octane. And then we come up here to the dotted lines. And turn off the render instance. You can see that they appear for the dotted line portion. So uh, we just need to change the thickness to like 0.1. So you can keep messing around and playing with this. Uh, what we'll do in the next lesson is uh, just get this looking a little bit better, the scene looking a little bit better, and then we'll set it up to go ahead and render and put it into After Effects. So thanks a lot for following me along on this one, guys. Remember, remember to subscribe to the channel and give this one a thumbs up if you liked it. And um, if you have any questions, just please leave them in the comment section below. But thanks a lot, guys. We really appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.